So yesterday, I posted a picture of this forge on Instagram, and it turned out to be one of the most controversial posts I think I may have ever made. I had to go so far as to delete a whole bunch of comments on that video due to the extreme negativity towards this forge. So before we do anything else, let's address some of the safety Sally concerns. Now, seeing like all of those negative comments were surrounding this, this wool blanket that surrounds the inside of this forge and the crystalline silica fiber it produces once it's heated up. Now, let's address this first and foremost, since it seems like it's gonna be quite the issue. The easiest way to address this is to just set this here. You can pause the video right here and read this if you're a safety Sally and worried you're gonna die using this forge. Does this statement here mean that this forge is completely safe to use? I got no clue. But to keep all the safety sallies from commenting down below, we know about this issue surrounding the crystalline silica fibers floating around in the air you breathe. What I do know is that it's probably not good to breathe any type of fiber, especially if you're in the state of California. So they did put a disclaimer on the back saying it pretty much whatever you do with this forge, they're completely released from any liability. So all of you safety sallies down there, might as well just save your comments. We know about the safety issues surrounding crystalline silica. And according to this statement and this new product first introduced in 2001, this does not release any crystalline silica. It says right here, zero crystalline silica. I do not work for this company. I bought this product with my own money and have no affiliation whatsoever with this forge manufacturer and cannot validate any of the claims made by the manufacturer in this video. I will hold no responsibility if you use this product and develop any health problems in doing so. I'm simply stating what's on the packaging. Do your own research and accept personal responsibility for yourself. Now, they do include a whole bunch of Satanite refractory cement and some rigidizer to completely coat the inside of this forge in case you're still worried about it. Because again, breathing any type of fiber that's floating around is probably not good for you, especially if you're in the state of California. Am I gonna do this with mine? No, I'm not, because it's probably gonna crack and fall apart the second I move it a couple of times anyway. But that's my decision. I accept that responsibility. I put that responsibility on me because personal responsibility is what matters. You can do whatever you like to do with your forge. You can choose to code it, or you can choose to leave it just like this. So let's back up a second. Since I hate mindless unboxing videos, and the assembly on this forge is so easy, even Diane Feinstein could do it with the included laminated instructions. And there's fear particularly in California. We're gonna fast forward through these parts to the fully assembled forge. Now not to sound like a safety sally again, but definitely check for leaks using soapy water. This is much more important and much bigger of a safety hazard than the non-existent fibers floating around your workshop. Now if you got offended by some of my safety sally comments, go ahead and click away from this video now. Your mom called and told me you weren't allowed to use the computer today. Mom! You said I could watch it! Come on! Ah, come on! The burner lights very easily and the flame adjusts easily using the sliding choke design. The burner on this forge is extremely powerful, and I can already tell you it is more than capable of doing any heat treating operation within the limits of the forge length. I can already tell you that this is gonna make, it may make my mini forge video outdated because I think that this is going to be able to heat treat, or I know it's going to be able to heat treat just about anything you're going to want to heat treat at home. Um, lengthwise, you're going to be able to get away with, you know, maybe something like a 10 inch blade heat treating it in here. Uh, it's the forge itself is 10 inches long, so you're probably not going to have any problems heat treating a 10 inch blade, you know, the actual blade portion of the knife in this forge. I can tell you it gets it definitely gets hot enough to do this. This is kind of the real deal as far as the forge goes. Now, whether or not this is gonna get up to forge welding temperatures, I don't know, and I'm not gonna test that in this video, but for heat treating, 
Uh, I, I don't think that you could probably beat this for 80 bucks. Now this thing turned down uh, pretty low. I'm going to say it's pretty close to about as low as it can go. And we're really getting, having no problems heating up this uh, four and a half inch blade. This will definitely heat treat at this temperature right here for sure. So one thing I wanted to point out here as we're cooling this forge down is this does not come with any fire brick in order to close off the front and rear. You could increase the efficiency of this forge and heat blades easier if you close off the front and the back of this leaving a smaller space in the front to get your knife in and out and allow oxygen to the flame and whatnot uh, and run a smaller flame size inside the forge. Um, this does not come with that so we're just testing this as it comes. And as it sits, it's more than capable of getting up to forging temperatures for smaller knives. But like I just said, you'll gain a lot of efficiency using some fire brick to close down the ends. If you're looking to work with larger, thicker pieces, you're definitely going to have to choke down the ends using some fire brick. And once the forge is up to temperature, you'll have no problem forging anything that will physically fit into the forge. And I know, I need to make a new anvil stand. Can you forge with this? Yeah. Do I need to mount my anvil properly? Yeah. So if you're wondering what I am kind of comparing this to, I do have a big forge up here. I don't use it that much. That's why it's up on the shelf. I'm not really a blacksmith or a forger, at least at this point. I just haven't had the time to uh, kind of mess around with it, but I have forged quite a bit in this and uh, this will do just about anything that you'd ever want to do with a forge. So this little forge right here for $80 is a pretty good value if you ask me. I think that big one up there ended up costing me like $450 or $500. It's very expensive. For $80 bucks, you can get basically a third of the capability of that big one. And I think that they make these in a double burner uh, for a little bit more. All in all, it went together really easily. The only thing that I'll say about it is you're definitely going to want to close off the ends on this to get more efficiency out of it. Otherwise, you're going to go through propane like nobody's business. Trust me, you'll blow through these tanks super quickly. But closing off the ends will help uh, increase the efficiency and it'll also help uh, heat up the blade more evenly. So factor that into the overall cost of this. If you already have the tank, that's great. If you don't, just go ahead and factor in another, at least another $80 to get the tank and to get it filled. And you'll have a pretty nice little forge set up for around 200 bucks. So I actually uh, am really liking the compact size of this smaller one. Sometimes I have to heat things up and I don't wanna have to put it, you know, wait for my oven to heat up or keep that big one out all the time because that takes up a ton of room. This I can kind of just throw on a shelf. It's super light. That big one up there weighs, I bet that thing weighs 80 or 90 pounds. It's ridiculous. But this thing I can pick up, kind of throw around, put on a shelf when it's all cool and uh, do what I need to do with it super quickly. So I kind of like the smaller form factor that this has. Now, we'll see whether or not this holds up over time. One of the biggest problems with forges that I've seen is that... Uh, especially with these, with the thinner metal that this has, is they'll tend to warp the, uh, the burner, where the burner goes into the forge. That tends to warp. I mean, these things are getting super, super hot, like, you know, enough to, to kind of warp steel, if that makes sense. And uh, we'll see how this holds up over time. And I guess we'll report back. I mean, we'll have to go through a bunch of heat cycles in order to test that. So yeah, we'll see. If you notice here, that has a USA flag on it. This is from the research that I did and my understanding this is made in the United States. When I first saw this thing for 80 bucks, I said this has to be made in China. 
Turns out it's not. It's made right here in the United States. Now here's the thing. There's a couple of other items in the industry right now that are claiming to be USA made, and it turns out they actually aren't or weren't being made in the United States. They were actually being made in China, or a significant portion of the product was made in China. I cannot find anything so far that says this is not made in the United States, and this company says it's made in the United States, so we're just gonna take them at their word and say that this is made in the United States, and for me, that's a big plus. So that's about all I have to say about this thing. It has everything you need other than the propane tank. If you already have a grill sized propane tank, 80 bucks gets you a really nice little forge. And I think that this is a much better option than the DIY mini forge from my past videos. It just gives you so much more capabilities for a little bit more money. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, but aren't a safety Sally, leave them in the comments below. And we'll see you in the next video.